Don't look like what you're going through when things fall apart. Don't act like what you're going through. Sometimes you need help. And sometimes your help needs your help. And God loves to come to the rescue of his children. Before you push sin, that was favor, y'all. We're in trouble. But God doesn't opt out just because I caused it. God, I just want to be anointed. God, I just want to be your son. God, I just want to change the world. No, if you want it, come get it. And everybody has to know about that. You will. Because we were in a, a series, we are in a series <clears throat> called The Body of Christ. And we were in the space of um, Acts 2. Oh, okay. I'll preach to a beat if y'all want me to. <laughs> wicked, wicked, as long as y'all got, got some wicked, wickets for me. <laughs> when, when I really started digging into this, and I had a, an understanding, a, a decent understanding in it. Um, in my mind about fasting, <clears throat> but I, I didn't, I didn't see it to these depths, and so um, more fasting to come. <laughs> but this one is important. Isaiah fifty-eight. Shout it out loud. So let me, let me say this. this. This text and the text last week started out really um, kind of uh, morbid or not morbid. Well, last week was kind of morbid. This week is kind of intense. God is addressing the Israelites um, through the prophet Isaiah. <clears throat> and their state at this time was one where they're heading toward um, exile. And the things he said to them was trying to get them to change their condition and things, spiritual things, they were doing in very non-spiritual ways and losing the effect and the power and the benefit that God had for them. So he started the conversation like this. Shout it aloud. Do not hold back. Raise your voice like a trumpet. Declare to my people their rebellion and to the descendants of Jacob their sins. For day after day, they seek me out. They seem eager to know my ways as if they were a nation that does what is right and has not forsaken the commandments of his God. They ask me for just decision and seem eager for God to come near to them. <clears throat> Why have you fasted, they say? Why have we fasted, they say, and you've not seen it? They're talking to God, y'all. <laughs> Why have we humbled ourselves and you have not noticed? Yet on the day of your fasting, you do so, um, you do as you please and exploit all your workers. Your fasting ends in quarreling and strife and, and striking each other and, and with wicked fists. Uh, you cannot fast as you do today and expect your voice to be heard on high. Is this the kind of fast I've chosen? Only for a day for people to humble themselves, literally humiliate themselves? <clears throat> Is it for only bowing one's head like a reed and uh, for lying in sackcloth and ashes? Is that what you call a fast? A day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the kind of fast I've chosen? To loose the chains of injustice? To untie the cords of the yoke? To set the oppressed grow free and break every yoke? Is this not the kind of fast I've chosen? Is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter when you see the naked to clothe them and not turn away from your own flesh and blood? Then your light will break forth like the dawn and your healing will quickly appear then your righteousness will go before you and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Then you will call and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help and he will say, here am I. If you do away with the yoke of oppression and with the pointing of the fingers and malicious talk. And if you spend yourselves in behalf of the hungry and satisfy the needs of the oppressed, then your light will rise in darkness and your night will be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in the sun-scorched land and will strengthen your frame. You will be like a well-watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fail. Your people will rebuild old ancient ruins and raise up the age-old foundations, and you will be called the repair of the broken walls and restorer of streets with dwellings. Thank you, Father, for your word. 
speak to our hearts in Jesus name amen so let's start <clears throat> from the beginning here what is a fast we can't assume that everybody knows what that is um, fast in the Bible that's our perspective that that's where we're coming from with this because there's there are health fasts as well this is not that this brings that as according to the, 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 the text we just read healing is a part of the promise of fasting but the purpose is something different. So abstain, fast is abstaining from food and or liquids for a period of time uh, for spiritual purposes. Um, I say and or liquids because there are a few fasts, two or three fasts in the Bible, where there was, uh, they fasted water, uh, food and water. The primary fast we deal with are food fast, where we fast food. I mean, when I say food fast, I don't mean a fast where you eat food. If it's better understood, a no food fast, I'll say it that way. Um, but those fasts were people that were in deep, 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 deep desperation, like David. And, 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 and two of them were for uh, uh, um, uh, three-day fast. Um, and uh, the other one was a 40-day, 40 40-night 40 fast when Moses was, like, almost sitting in God's lap. They were on top of the mountain, and he came down, and his face was shining so bright that the people couldn't look at him. So that's quite supernatural. So unless you're going to go to heaven and fast for 40 days and 40 nights, if you choose to do that, don't do it without water. Um, I'm not advocating that, but just, just, just letting you know. So in the Bible, there um, are food fasts and also abstinence fasts. Uh, uh, Paul talks about in 1 Corinthians that um, if you decide to fast, have the consent of your spouse that for a limited time, you may give yourself to fasting and prayer that you may come together back on the other side of that. Um, they, there's a there one day fast in the Bible. There's three day fast in the Bible. There's seven day fast. There's 21 day fast. There's 40 day fast. All of these are. Um, uh, uh, let me let me say this. Let me just give you this caveat. Always consider your health. <clears throat> I'm not giving anybody uh, medical advice up here, or health advice. Did y'all hear that out there? That's my asterisk. Okay. Always consider your health. Consult your physician. Modify if you need to based on that, but do something to fast. Everybody make a sacrifice. Everybody make as serious a sacrifice as you can. If you can go seven days with, 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 with just water, and I believe most of us in the room can, then do that. Will it be easy? Probably not. <laughs> and we're, we're, again, we're going to talk about it today. Um, but fast with us for seven days in one way or another. If, if you, some people sometimes, diabetics have to, have to eat with their medicine, then eat what you need to eat, eat what's called food. Twinkies and, <laughs> not, we're not talking about that. Even on the Daniel fast, y'all, I'm, this is a rabbit trail big time, but we gonna, people go on Daniel fast and, and it's only vegetables and fruit. So we had pineapple and orange and strawberries and bananas and put them in a blender. You're eating. <laughs> you, you, that's, a, that's a delectable treat. Fast is to separate yourself and make a sacrifice in your flesh for a spiritual benefit. Okay? That, that's the point. It, you need to feel it. Now, according to the Bible here, you don't do it to put yourself in the ashes. You don't do it to humiliate yourself. You don't do it um, to bow down your head because God, the Bible says God is the glory and the lifter of your head. You, you're not trying to torture yourself. You're trying to um, uh, 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 pay more attention to your spiritual life than you do your natural life. And eating is the most, thing in, the most indigenous thing to human life, to natural biological life than anything. And so our dependence, we actually, look, love, let's be honest. We have a love affair with food. Food is some of our boo. It just, we go on vacations and stuff. We might not know all the events we're going to do. We might not know about that. And we do this. My wife's going to be getting away soon. Uh, we don't know what we're going to be doing necessarily. We know we want massages, but um, we don't know where we're going, what we're doing, all of that. But we know what restaurants we're eating at. <laughs> and so, and again, we'll talk more about that. But so it's making that sacrifice that awakens the spirit. It's, it's, it's depriving the flesh and it causes an arising and awakening in the spirit. Okay? And so the same kinds of ambiguity. <laughs> Thank you. I saw your help back. 
arises in the conversation of fasting as it does things like giving. Well, you know, is it really, do we really have to, is tithing really in the New Testament? And do we really have to, and, and, and it's that kind of ambiguity comes up in fast. Do we really have to fast? There's things in the body of Christ, you know, released years ago, it's called the fasted life. I don't go days without eating because I live a fasted life. I, I'm always exercising self-control. That's way different than going a day without, or two or three without eating anything. And the impact is entirely different, okay? I'm going to get to the benefits in a minute. So always think twice when you're fighting for your right to escape something spiritual. If you're working real hard to opt out of something, um, consider that might be something God wants you to participate in. So, um, so let's get to, to, to some questions here. Is fasting commanded in the Scripture? Now, let me ask the question again. I'm not asking you that question. I'm going to answer it. Is fasting commanded in the Scripture? No, it's not commanded. Is fasting expected in the scripture? Yes. Jesus told his disciples, uh, they were talking about the Pharisees, and he was saying all these things the Pharisees did to boast about the fast, the way they were fasting. At the end of the day, he said, but when you fast, what did he say? When you fast. They came to him and questioned about, why aren't your disciples fasting? Well, the disciples of John are fasting. And the, uh, he said, well, when the bridegroom is with the, w- the wedding party, they don't fast. But when he leaves, that's when they fast. And he was talking about himself as the bridegroom, and he was talking about his disciples. As the wedding. So when I leave here, when I ascend again, I expect them to fast. So does the Bible say in the 11th commandment, thou shalt fast and go days without eating? No, it does not. But is it clear in the scripture that fasting is an expectation? Yes. By who? Let's just stop with Jesus. He expects us as his disciples to fast. Is fasting rewarded in the scripture? Yes. I'm going to prove that to you. Is fasting effective in the scripture? Yes. Is there a difference in the lives of those who fast and those who don't? Yes. Disciples came to Jesus and said, uh, why couldn't we cast out this devil? He said, because of your unbelief. He said, how be it? This kind of devil only comes out when people fast and pray. And those same men who then could not cast out that devil cast out those kinds of devils in the book of Acts because then they were fasting and praying men. So there is a difference. Don't let anybody fool you. There is a just try. Be, do, do like God says uh, with tithing. Prove me now herewith. Go on this fast with us and see what happens to your life. Who fasted? Priests fasted in the Bible. Levites, citizens, kings, queens, prophets, men, women, children, animals. When stuff got real desperate, when Jonah came down there and when he finally got out, got spit up by that fish up on the thing, and fish, fish, vomit, the seaweed, running through that town looking crazy, saying, God going to come through here. Because you're all wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. The Bible said the king of Nineveh said, I want men and women to fast. I want boys and girls, children to fast. And I want animals to fast. Because he was desperate. Because God said, uh, all y'all going to die. <laughs> so he threw himself on the mercy of God. And, and, and People in trouble fasted. Scared people fasted. Listen for yourself in this list. People with trouble fasted, scared people fasted, grieving people fasted, worshiping people fasted, praying people fasted, thankful people fasted, victorious people fasted, defeated people fasted, inquiring people fasted, fivefold ministry fasted, congregations fasted, nations. There were national fasts in the Bible. Jesus fasted, Jesus' disciples fasted, and want to be like Jesus' people fasted. I think that's us. Is not this the kind of fast um, I've chosen to loose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of yoke and to set the oppressed uh, free and to break every yoke? So now, 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 let's look at this. What God is saying that he ordained in the fast is that it results in the loosing of chains of unrighteousness, loosing chains of wickedness, loosing chains of injustice. God wants change to be broken, and sometimes the only way that that can happen is when we fast. He said two things here. He said, I want to undo the heavy burden or untie a person from the heavy burden, and then I want to break yokes. I need a volunteer. Uh, give me a, a, a brother here. Um, come on up here. Hopefully I'll need to 
reach high to get you. Okay. I need one more. Okay, fa- face that way. Come on over there. So my brother here is is oppressed and dealing with oppression. I want you to be back here, and you're 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 holding him. You're holding uh, 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 him. He's in a yoke, and that yoke is attached to the burden. The Bible said through fasting, what he wants to happen is that he be untied from the burden, and now the burden's a non-issue. And then he said, after he's untied, take the yoke off his neck and break it so that it can never be placed there again. If you've got bondages in your life and things you've been wrestling with, and have been unable to let go in a fast, the Bible says what God wants to happen is that you be loosed from the burden, which immediately lightens your yoke, but it's not enough. He wants to take the yoke off, break it, and stomp it in the ground, and say, get back on them now if you can. God wants things broken off our lives with finality, habits, thought patterns, relationships, soul ties, Things that we have not been able to shake on our own. God has a plan for that. And that plan can be enacted during a fast. Thank you, brothers. Thank you. Verse 8. I I, I won't bother reading that. I've read it before. Verse 8 promises God wants there to be new beginnings. Then your light will break forth like the dawn. And your healing will quickly appear. Then your righteousness will go before you. Your righteousness will get there before you do. Hmm. And the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. So here he's promising new beginnings. He's promising healings. And he's promising righteousness as a guard. How is that the case? Because you're elevated in a place with Yahweh. And because of your righteousness in this place of elevation you've entered into, that blocks the enemy's attack on you. He can't get to where you are. Your righteousness has excelled. It's been amplified because in the fast, things have fallen off of you that you couldn't shake on your own. Now it shows up in different, there's the righteousness that God imputes, and then there's the righteousness the Bible says, he that doeth righteous is righteous. Things fall off on you, and you live a different life, and now your distance from the enemy and the Spirit of God in between you and that blocks things from getting to you. Then after that, what happens is, because you're living in a new place of righteousness, uh, righteous obedience, you make different kinds of decisions, and your different kinds of decisions will defend you. When you fast, you're quickened. You think about things different. Your perspective is different. Your answers are different. Something you would have said yes to, now you know. Oh, that's a definitely no. And that no right there is your guard. It keeps you off that path and away from that thing and away from that person. And now you're guarded because you had a no instead of a yes. There's other things that God is looking for a yes out of you. And it's been, oh, no. But now you're in a safe zone because you've taken the path of God instead of the one that you would have rather taken where there's danger and calamity and destruction down that road. Now you're protected. And then it says... So in front of you is your righteousness, your new standing with God, and your, and your, your excellent place in God. And the Bible says, and the glory of the Lord himself has your back. God got your back. All you got to do is keep moving forward, and the glory of the Lord is your rear guard. <laughs> Woo! Literally in the Hebrew, when it says rear guard, uh, it says re-reward in King James. It means to be surrounded by protection. Every side of you is watched. Look at somebody and say, y'all better fast. Verse 9. Then you will call and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help. He said, here I am. (laughs) If you do away with the yoke of oppression and the pointing of fingers and malicious talk, there's a qualification here. So it says your prayers will be quickly answered. Why? Because your proximity to God is different. You're closer to him than you were. You can feel his heat. You can feel his grace, his anointing, and his power. You're in a different space. Your whole atmosphere, your sphere is different. And when you, that, you know why God can say, here I am? Because he literally, he is where you are. 
It's like he'll answer quick. No, you're going to hear him quick. Because <laughs> he's right here. <clears throat> so, your proximity to God is different. And now, and, and you might say, uh, that's an Old Testament concept. We don't have to draw near to God uh, because see, the Holy Spirit is in us. James 4 and 4, I believe it is, don't bother Elaine, but James somewhere in the fourth chapter, he's the one in the New Testament, the brother of Jesus, by the way, said, draw near to God. Okay, enough said. So, uh, so then he goes back to the how. And he says, if you take away the oppressive yoke among you. Now, that, uh, that yoke above is Satan's yoke. This right here is a yoke that we actually, uh, we enforce we engage in because he said stop pointing fingers stop blaming stop pointing out people's inadequacies because we all have them actually what it says is stop stop nodding the head it's, it's stop um somebody just came in the in the, in the back door and i, I nudged my wife's like, <laughs> don't do it that's not the kind of fast god wants so, so, so what God wants to happen is during a fast, he wants things to change and he wants them to stay changed. It ain't just get holy for a week and go buck wild on the eighth day. No, don't plan on getting back to life as usual. Don't plan on getting back to those things. Plan on being better. Plan on making different choices. You, you, listen. Dream, like dream big before you start to fast. And all that stuff you think is impossible and out of this world, write it down. Because right now to you, it is impossible. But on the other side of seven days with Jesus and paying attention to him, all those things are going to be like right there. It's like, I can actually do this, y'all. I ain't never got to call that whatever again in my life. I ain't got to answer his or her phone call and his or her text. I ain't got to say yes. I'm not that weak anymore. I'm somewhere else. Give me verse 10, Elaine. Okay, so verse 10, is this one is about, this one actually might surprise you. And if you spend yourselves in behalf of the hungry and satisfy the needs of the oppressed, then your light will rise in darkness and your night will become like noonday. Now, this one might surprise you because this is actually saying spend your time. This is the kind of fast God calls for. Because this is the kinds of things he wants to be incorporated and founded and established during a fast so you can come out the other end in that space. Spend your time thinking about and taking action against social oppression. This is what he was saying to them. Because some rotten stuff was happening in Israel. And he said, if you're, if you're paying attention to me, you're going to be paying attention to these things. You're not going to be okay with people just being mistreated societally religiously whatever the case he's talking about societal oppression here and he's saying take their plight to heart and then do everything that's in your power to change that and, and in our case uh, we got uh, 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 LMTS outreach center right down there we feed and clothe people here. We have all, Pastor Paul is doing an incredible job of pastoring the outreach, the missions, the, 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 the fiscal. He has an assignment that it, he is second to none. You have two pastors at Tabernacle of David Church. I'm Pastor Mark. I, I pastor the, um, the, the primary spiritual health of the church. I'm primarily, I'm not the only person that preaches the word. Pastor Paul preached the word just a few weeks ago, and then other people as well. But you'll see him probably more than you will anybody else. But he, he has an anointing to preach the word. He can pray for the sick, and he does it. He goes to the hospital, him and his wife, they go visit people. They call and check up, all those things. But my primary role is to, to, to see over those things because he's a pastor. He has a heart to as well. But then there's this other thing where he makes sure that the church has the opportunity to do this very thing right here. And that shouldn't be a member of this church that doesn't at least once a month reach out and feed somebody. Go down there and pass out some food at LMTS. Come here on every first Wednesday and smile and greet some people so that when they're feeling up, pulling up to feel food, get food, they're not feeling shame. They're feeling love instead. 
Let this man of God lay his hands on you and empower his anointing to, to, to love, his anointing to share. Right now they're in Africa, y'all. Right now they are in Africa saying things. I talked to him a couple of days ago. Saying things to people that they've never heard before. Things we take for granted. You're going to talk about what he So let that anointing get on you and have a heart for what's happening in your society because it matters to God. That's one way you can participate. You know another way? This might really be strange here. All these things are contextually um, translated. So the, God, he was telling them to do everything you can to deal with the social ills. So in our case, we can do the things we just talked about. We can pray for our city. We can pray for our state. We can pray for our nation. We can pray for our world. God bless you. I hope you are. And there's something else that we have the power to do in our case that is this in context to our particular time. And that is vote in the arenas that you have the power to. When you see social ills and things and situations where people are mistreated, whether it's in your city, in your state, in your nation, you have the right to vote. And do exercise your power to deal something about the social ills in our country. God does not want them, us to ignore those things. It's right here in the scripture. All right, let me move on like we're in a big hurry. I'm saying to get off that point. So verse 11, let's look at this and then I want to get to a couple of things. The Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in sun scorched land and he will strengthen your frame. You will be like a well-watered garden and like a spring whose waters do not fail. That means the Lord will continually guide you even when it's environmentally dark. Sometimes you have the light in you. You have the light of Christ in you. But time, sometimes the situation around you is environmentally dark. And you're in a way that you see who you are. So you see where you are. But everything else is kind of murky. The Bible says when you fast the way he chooses you to, that you, that, that you will have a, a, a bright light in ev- environmental darkness. When things get hot, he talked about the sun scorching, you won't be vulnerable. You'll be covered. You'll be protected. You'll be provided for. In your situations, we have hot spots in our lives. We have hot spaces in our lives. In those hot spaces, the Bible says God will protect you, provide for you, and make sure you're covered. Okay? Verse verse 12, don't even turn. This says that lost things will be restored and you will recover from past disasters. Your past will be healed when you fast. So now why fast? I'm just going to hit a couple points here. This is what I've been really trying to get to. Give me Joel 2.2, Jude 2.12 and 13. Yet even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart. With what? Fasting. Fasting and weeping and with mourning. Keep going. And, re, uh, and rend your hearts and not your garments. Turn to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and he relents over disaster. One of the benefits of fasting is repentance. Repentance, as we talked about Wednesday, is a changing of mind. People often confuse confession with repentance. A lot of times we think repentance is saying, Lord, I'm really sorry for what I did. And, and, and you need to say this. Lord, I'm sorry for what I did. I shouldn't do this. I knew I was wrong. And, 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 and. That's confession. Repentance is change your mind. Because you confess. You can confess and go back and do it again because you're thinking the same way. How many times, and anybody got to raise their hand with me, but how many times, or have there not been a lot of times when you said, uh, God, I just, I don't ever going to do that no more. I'm sorry, you, that's not pleasing to you, and I know that, and I ain't doing that no more. And you did it again. <laughs> that's because you confessed, but you didn't repent. Repentance is change of mind. It's let God deal with the parts of you that you can't get your hands on. Sometimes we don't even know how we got the way we are. We don't know why we want that stuff. We don't know why we're particularly bound, why I have that particularly proclivity. I don't want that. I think it's foul. When I see it in other people, I'm disgusted, and I'm disgusted. I don't know how I got here. You don't have to know. All you got to do is bring your heart humbly toward God, and in a moment of fasting, he can get to that place that you can't change, and you'll have a change of mind. Suddenly, you'll start seeing things God's way and happy that you are. I know what I'm talking about. Okay, that's okay. So repentance is a change of mind of heart. And when you're struggling and keep failing in a certain space, you might need to fast. 
there could be some part of you that's justifying your right to do that or justifying your need. It's, I, I just, I need this. It's, it's, you know, I have human needs, and we all do, all these things. Uh, refer to the last couple of Bible uh, studies, and we'll go deep into such a conversation. But you might have needs that, that are legitimate needs. You might have struggles that are legitimate struggles. But God has the ability to go in there and help you churn that thing and change it around and make it something different to suddenly light breaks forth and you see exactly how you should be and you know how to be that way because God has destroyed the yoke over your life. It could be a vice, it could be bad or unproductive habits, it could be soul ties, it could be relationships, it could be attitudes, it could be our mouth, it could be our mind, but God can destroy every yoke. He has the power to help you change your mind, but sometimes you got to go a little deeper. There's some things that will never be broken of your life simply by coming here and hearing anywhere else and hearing a powerful word. Powerful worship, powerful prayer, powerful word. All those things are powerful and necessary, but you can get in the face of God and break the yoke of your flesh. And everything you have been listening to come running back like a flood all of a sudden. Everything you heard once and thought you forgot about, God has been there the whole time. But fasting will break that well and break up that dam and all of a sudden you have access to years worth of power that you've been storing up. Second thing, that was, that was thing number one. Repentance is one of the benefits of fasting. Number two, plans, instruction, direction. Give me Exodus 34, 27 and 28. And the Lord said to Moses, write these words for in, in, uh, for in accordance with these words, I have made a covenant with you and with Israel. So he was there with the Lord 40 days and nights. He neither ate bread nor drank water. He was with who? He was with who? So he was literally in God's face. That's why he was able to go 40 days without water and food. Don't ever do that. In Jesus' name, amen. And he wrote, and he wrote on the tablets the words of the covenant and the Ten Commandments. So what Moses got there was, was far beyond just the Ten Commandments. So what you got to consider is that Israel is, this is Israel's birth as a nation. They were a race, but they weren't a nation yet until now and they've never been set free now suddenly they're free with no idea how to live that way they don't know where they're going and they don't know where they are just in the wilderness somewhere they just know where they've been and that was bad they were a passionate emotional bitter fearful traumatized people and oh yeah there were millions of them and so God called Moses up to the mountain and said, I need to talk to you about some stuff. Because you have to give these people a plan. They can't just do what comes to their mind next. And so Moses went before the face of God and through fasting while he was up there, his total focus was on God. And he wrote these things and God gave these people a plan. And sometimes just like them, we try to take all that we are and all that we've been through into our next best. But that don't work. Your next best just needs your next you. And sometimes the only thing that can provide that is you go on a fast before the face of God and let him change things and give you a plan. It was more than the Ten Commandments. We need a plan for our lives, y'all. When I'm embarking on something new, you hear the voice of God because there's so much at stake. Something, uh, sometimes we just try to get saved and live saved because uh, time won't be long. <laughs> But God will give you a plan. He'll give you a plan for your weaknesses. He'll tell you exactly what you need to do. He'll tell you exactly who you don't need to talk to in fasting. He'll tell you exactly who you need to start talking to. You and this person may not get along so well, but God wants to deal with your flesh so you can communicate because they got something you need. And God will begin to point out situations, point out things, point out who to block on your phone, point out who to. That's part of the plan, y'all. Tell you what to quit watching. Tell you what to quit listening to. Moses got a plan in the middle of his fast. God wants to give you a plan for your life. <laughs> he wants to give you a plan for victory, a plan for success, a plan to overcome, a plan for promotion. 
That doesn't just come on the norm. You need to do something about that. Number three, leadership establishment was one of the things that were part of the, 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 uh, uh, the that occurred in fast. He says, and they had ordained themselves elders in every church, and had prayed with fasting, and they commanded, uh, commended them to the Lord on whom they believed. Right there. Yeah, yeah. So now, when establishing leadership in the church, they fasted because it was incredibly important. People that are responsible for the things of God should be appointed through fasting. It may not be the obvious choice. It might not be the low-hanging fruit. Oh, they're faithful. They tithe. They give. They're excited about Jesus. They've been here for years, years, just doing it. It might not be the obvious choice. You better talk to God. It might be that odd bird sitting on the left over here where you're like, but God knows everything, y'all. <laughs> he knows what we don't know. Now, let me say this. If you're responsible for appointing people and hiring people on your job and managing people, you better fast before you make that next hire. Because you could be hiring an angel or a demon to tear your whole department up. Fasting is for everybody. If you're a manager, you better fast. Fourth thing is favor. Give me faster fourth, 13 through 16. And Mordecai told them, I, I don't have time for the story. Esther is a short book in the Bible. Read the whole thing, please. Mordecai told them um, to answer Esther, uh, do, not, do, do not think in your heart that you will escape in the king's palace any more than all the other Jews. This genocide was about to happen. For if you remain completely silent at this time, relief and deliverance will rise from the Jews from some other place, and they'll receive the blessing of God. That's my implication there. But you and your father's house, you and your father's house will perish. Yet who knows whether you have come into the kingdom for such a time as this. Then Esther told them to reply to Mordecai, go gather all the Jews who are present in Shushan and fast for me. What did he say, do fast? Fast? Yeah, yeah. Uh, neither eat or drink water for three days. This is one of those three-day straight fasts. Uh, night or day, my, my maids will uh, fast likewise, and so will I, uh, uh, and so I will go to the kingdom who is against the law. Basically what she's saying, I'm going to do something that's against the law and just barge in on the king. He said, if I perish, I perish. So she said, she said, she said, fast. Now, why did she say this? Because her husband was a maniac. This is probably, the, in my opinion, he is, he is among maybe the top three, four, might be the first, most impetuous people in the Bible. He was a total maniac. The Bible doesn't record all of it. What the Bible does is it looks at history uh, from inside the Bible out. Uh, world history, uh, Xerxes is actually who this king is. The world knows him as Xerxes. In the Bible, he was a Hazarus. Um, but the, the world looks at it from the outside into Israel. And world history says this man was a nut. And even you even see it in the scripture. Can I say that? I don't know if I can say that. It's a three-letter word. Can I say Okay. Okay, so, so this man was off his rocker. The Bible said, you can tell by the Bible narrative, when, when he, um, his first queen, he had her come in, and he wanted her to do some exotic dance in a room full of drunk men. And she said, I'm not going in there. And so he said, you ain't the king no more. I banished you. Well, in Persian law, whatever the king puts in writing, even he came returning. So he couldn't have her back. And they saw him looking out the window over across where she lived to my baby, come back. They didn't want him to tear up the kingdom. One day, she was the scum of the earth. The next day, he was like, I love you, baby. Oh, hook em, smook em. Because he changed constantly. Let me give you just one story. God, please give me the time to get his one story. This man, this man, he, um, there was this body of water called the Hellespont. That was between um, two gulfs, two uh, active bodies of water. And this Hellespont was in between two land masses. And these two large masses would cause that water to be so turbulent that there was no way over that. And so what Xerxes did, he decided to build a bridge. He was conquering the world at this time. So he said, build me a bridge to his man over this Hellespont because you couldn't take a boat because it'd get tore up. So they built a bridge. Now, they built the bridge successfully. Then the turbulent waters, as expected by others who were balanced, tore the bridge up. So what he did was commanded his men to take chains and scourges and whoop the water while he talked to it. 
I don't know if I ever had a good whooping in here where your parents talk to you. I said, don't you do that. And you did it anyway. That's what he did to the water. They whooped the water, and he was fussing at the water. Then, wait, there's more. All the men that built his bridge, he had them beheaded because they built a bridge that the water tore up. This is the man, when, that's why when Mordecai came there and said, we need you to go talk to the king. She said, you out, you out, you out your mind. This man, uh, today I'm fine. Tomorrow I'm Eveline. I don't know what mood he's in. Today he loved the lipstick. Tomorrow it looked like liver blood. Anyway, so, so she was like, I'm not going to talk to him. Then Mordecai says this. Don't you think you're going to escape? You better do something. She said, y'all go fast. The fourth benefit of fasting is you can fast for favor. She, this is, a, yeah. So, so what she did, she said, y'all fast because I'm going to see the king. I don't want to die, but if I do die, I've got to do what i got to do. So she fasted, and the Bible says um, after three days of fasting, she walked in to the space where he was. If he didn't lift up that scepter, that was your head. If he lifted up the scepter, then, 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 then she was good. So the Bible says she looked around that corner, came in, and she, first of all, she got all good. She got, she got that look on. Pulled her bangs over one eye like this. You know them games. <laughs> she put that, put that, that banged eye in the door like this. He took that, he stuck that thing up in the air like this. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. This is this is the favor that came off the fast. As she was walking through, he said, "Come here, my queen." She, she said, "I will give you anything up to half of your, my kingdom. What you want today, baby?" That was favor, y'all. <laughs> And then God gave her a plan, and she worked that plan, and the favor of the Lord saved the entire nation of Israel in that province. They were going to kill all of them, but she needed favor with the right man, and she fasted for that favor. If you got something heavy on the line, before you go into that interview, before you fill out that resume, before you push enter, before you push sin, give God a moment, give him a day, give him something, and fast before the Lord, and watch the favor of the Lord make that thing come to pass for you. Ah, fifth thing, spiritual preparation. Fasting gives you spiritual Preparation. Give me Luke 4, 1 and 14. And Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. And he was tested and all those things. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights. So that, that's the next thing. He was led to the, into the wilderness and he fasted. Give me 14. Then Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. So now, Jesus was led by the Spirit, fasted. Then he returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee. And the news of him Went through all that region roundabout. No, 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 no. This, this is not. This is for new seasons and new endeavors. Sometimes God is knocking on your door. He's nudging on your heart. He's like, I got something for you. There's something new on the horizon, and you can't quite see how to get to it. You might even know exactly what it is. He might have told you exactly what you are. It might have a title. It may have a calling attached. It may have a business name attached. But when going into new endeavors, this was not Jesus uh, just asking God for more power. This is not him saying, God, I just want to be anointed. God, I just want to be your son. God, I just want to change the world. No, he had a specific assignment. And when going into this brand new endeavor that had a specific assignment, he needed to hear from God what was going on. This was a new chapter in his life. We have new chapters in our life, y'all. If you're going into a new chapter, you better talk to God. Give him a minute. Give him a day. Give him two. Give him three. Whatever it is. But when you're going into something new, you got to give God a moment so he can tell you what that is. A new ministry endeavor. A new job. A new career. A new business. Going into a new education. Into a new marriage. Or you're about to have a child. Okay. This is all about a shift. This is when things, God's trying to shift things. He's trying to turn things and give you a new chapter. He's opening a new door. (laughs) 
You got to know how to walk through that door. You got to know who you are when you walk through that door. Listen, just a few days, a few scriptures later in this same scenario, Jesus walks into that temple and rolled that scroll over to Isaiah 60. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, preach deliverance to the captive, the recovery of sight to the blind, set at liberty them to the root and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears because I'm here. I'm here now. This is who I am. This is what I do. My father told me, and I'm here. If you want it, come get it. Tell somebody, you better fast. He wants to identify you. He wants to tell you what you're there for. He wants to articulate your assignment. Somebody waiting on you to get there. If you don't know who you are, they're not going to know who you are. God's got an identity for you. God got something for you, son. It's powerful. It's wonderful. Hey. Number six, you fast when you're in trouble. Second Corinthians 21, 4, give it to me. And it happened after this time that the people of Moab with the people of Ammon, my eyes are murky, so it's hard for me to read and cry and all this. Stuff. Others with that, I probably need to do like they did. Read it, reader. Give me some hype. <laughs> trouble y'all he was looking at an enemy he know he couldn't whoop let's be honest we faith people but sometimes we, we face stuff it's like I can't do nothing with that that's stronger than I am in the space that exists listen li, 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 li. they ain't just my supervisor they ain't just my manager they the plant manager I can't do nothing with this I ain't got enough voice or complaint in the world to overcome this thing sometimes we're in trouble Sometimes we get in trouble. Sometimes we got ourselves into that trouble. But God doesn't opt out just because I caused it. I'm his son. Huh. So let me just, so let me just read. I'm, I'm going to go read these scriptures. I'm just going to reference these scriptures and talk through the rest of this because it's a long passage. So in 2 Chronicles uh, 20 and 3, the Bible says they fasted. In 6 through 12, it says they prayed. In 14 through 16, the Bible says he raised up a prophet and they prophesied. This is all in a response and after the fast. God loosed the prophets in the middle of the fast. <laughs> verse 15, he said, the battle isn't yours, but it's God's. <laughs> In verse 20, it said, believe in the Lord, and it shall be, you'll be established. Believe his prophets, and so shall you prosper. Verse 22 says, Judah will praise. If you don't know that song, yeah, don't worry about it. But he said, Judah went first, and they praised in front of them. Verse 23 says, God confused the enemy, and they all killed each other. And in verse 25, the Bible says, Judah took the spoil. That was all over an enemy that they couldn't do nothing with. But they went to God in fashion and in prayer. And God loves to come to the rescue of his children. It does something for his reputation to get you out of something you couldn't get out of without him. God loves being necessary, y'all. Take him in trouble with you. The Bible says he's a present help in trouble. God will get in trouble with you and it won't be trouble anymore. Because you can't trouble God. So he, stayed, he, he stepped down inside that trouble, and trouble was like, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, 
yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, number seven. <laughs> Fasting is important uh, for developing Christ likeness. Yeah. Matthew 6, 16. Now, get that man a mic. I got help. Ain't no use of me up here sweating, doing all stuff, wiping sweat, tears out of my eyes. This is a body. Read, reader. Moral. Ooh. When you fast, mm -hmm. do not be like the hypocrites mm -hmm. with a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear to men to be fasting. Assuredly, I say unto you that they have their reward. But you, when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, so that you do not appear to be men to be fasting. But to your father who is in secret in the secret place, and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. For developing Christ likeness. Fasting is the perfect simulator for Christ likeness. It presents the perfect environment for practice. You know how when you when you're going to be a pilot, they put you in a simulator? And that simulator uh, demonstrates to you and takes you through everything you might go through in a pilot. When everything's smooth. Then they simulate turbulence, and you're doing like this, and dropping 30 feet out of the sky, people screaming behind you. It's all there. People knocking on the cockpit. They simulate you crashing and see if you can get yourself out of it. They simulate you crashing, and I make all these things are in the simulator. And what fasting does is it puts you in the simulator because there's certain challenges that arise through fasting that don't arise anywhere else. So <clears throat> let, let, me, let me say this. If you're serious about the next thing in God, if you're serious about growing, if you're serious, serious about um, God using for his glory, if you're serious about exceed, succeeding, if you're serious about favor, all the things we've mentioned, they're, they're one of the most important things about fasting that you must know, there's something that everybody has to know about fasting. You will be hungry. And you should start lying now. You will be hungry. You may be weak, tired, irritable, self-righteous. Look at all these people around here smacking all these Big Macs, and I'm fasting before the Lord. Been there, done that. Lonely. What this, this was supposed to be the text where Jesus told his uh, 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 disciples. Oh, actually, it probably was. He said, he, he said, the Pharisees fast like this. Okay, good, 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 good. Thank you, Elaine. Man. Jesus said to them, don't look like what you're going through. That's why fasting is a good simulator. Because you learn how to not look like we're going through going. And by extension, don't act like what you're going through. If you set your heart to seek the Lord and let him change you in the midst of a fast, you learn how not to fall apart when things fall apart. Fasting with grace so that no one knows that your fasting is like boot camp for Christ's likeness. <laughs> Your flesh is weak, and it simulates the moments when you're tempted. It's like, I really want to eat right now. I really want to have something to drink right now. I really would love to go out tonight because they all told me we were all going out, and I told them I wasn't going. I didn't tell them they fasted. I was fasting. They asked me because the Bible said I shouldn't, and they're asking me why, and they're bugging me with this, and I really just want to break down and go, but God, I made you a promise, and I'm not going to do it. In the most difficult of circumstances, you learn to obey the voice of God. And when you get out of that, what is no to somebody who said no while they were fasting? Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You have voluntarily entered a commitment to tell your flesh no. <laughs> and you know your flesh is going to be knocking for days. And you... you, you it, your flesh will have you cooking your first after fast meal. And there's stuff in it you won't even eat. 
you don't like Brussels sprouts. But boy, your flesh is telling you, you put a little, put a little Lowry's on them, them Brussels sprouts, the soft ham and a little butter, toss a little sugar on top. Woo, I can't wait to day eight. I can't wait to day seven, 6 p.m. <laughs> and you tell your flesh no. <laughs> So if you can tell your flesh no when you're tired, weak, irritable, and hungry, you can just, you just plain know how to say no. All right, just a couple more here, y'all. Um, number eight, increase access to your spiritual authority, and particularly in the area of deliverance. Give me Matthew 17. It says, then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, why could we not cast this devil out? Hmm? Read, read, I'm sorry. You got to do your job here, man. So Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief. For assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. One more. However, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. Mm -hmm. So fasting aligns you with the flow of your spiritual authority. God has authorized you to do something, and the power is there. But we're not, already, we're not always aligned with where that power is flowing. Our minds aren't thinking that way. Um, our bodies aren't cooperating that way. God will say something, but we're, we're tired. Or because we've done something, we did something else with our time, now we don't have the time. And what fasting does is it allows, aligns you with the place, the location, because there is a spiritual location. There's a portal. There's a door in your life somewhere that God will open it up, and your authority is something you walk in. Fasting also implies that... Uh, 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 it amplifies your voice in the spirit. Fasting amplifies your faith. Remember, he said, he said, why couldn't we cast the devil out? He said, because you're unbelief. That didn't stop being true when he made the next statement. Right, right. It was still a matter of faith. Right. He said, how be it, this kind cometh not out by fasting prayer. This kind of faith? No, 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 no. So, 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 in a sense, what happens is you have capacity for a faith that you did not before you started fasting. Come on, come on. Sometimes you're at your limit. The spiritual things are all about displacement. The spiritual thing comes in, the carnal thing goes out. The spiritual thing comes in, the carnal thing goes out. Well, if you've met, you've met capacity and there's nothing strong enough to push what's out in, you don't have access to that, though it's yours. And so you have access to a greater capacity of faith. You can read the same scripture the same way and it'll say something different to you this time. Because you're sensitive. Them words will jump off the page. Yesterday it said all things are possible to those who believe. Today it would be like all things. I said all things. That means anything at all. Whatever is in front of me is possible, is probable, is inevitable if I just believe. You hear it different when you're fasting. It hits different when you fast. You pray from somewhere else. You believe from somewhere else. You speak from somewhere else. You bless from somewhere else. You ask from somewhere else. You intercede from somewhere else. You preach and teach from somewhere else. You prophesy from somewhere else. You declare from somewhere else. You counsel from somewhere else. You rebuke from somewhere else. You bind from somewhere else. You loose from somewhere else. You feed, lay hands. You say, come out from somewhere else. Two more, nine. Oh, Lord Jesus. Dependence on God. Fasting, it, it promotes spiritual hunger and, it, and, and your dependence on God. Fasting is unique to other spiritual disciplines in that it, it focuses largely on your physical body. And your body's not calling the shots anymore when you're fasting. And so now your dependence leans toward God. When you used to go and eat something when you was feeling bad. Or what you had to look forward to, look, y'all. I eat my food before I even get to it. I eat my food before I cook it. That's why it's not safe for people to take something out of the refrigerator that I brought home as leftovers. Because I had a plan for that already. I knew what I was going to do with the rest of my ribeye steak. I was going to cut up some onions and some peppers and put this kind of spice on it and get it and put some, put some uh, I, 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 hungry people. I'm talking to hungry people about fasting in church. That's not smart. So, um, uh, so since your body is not, and your flesh is not calling all the shots, it causes you to lean in and have a dependence on God. 
It promotes getting closer to God because he's who you have in that moment. And it'll elevate your space in there. And God will begin be, be your sustainer. Okay? Let's, uh, so we, we're going to get over that point. The last point. Here we go. So give me Daniel um, 10, 1 through 6, and, uh, and 10 through 13, Elaine. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a message was revealed to Daniel, whose name was called Bethesheshazzar. The message was true, but the appointed time was long, and he understood the message and had understanding of the vision. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant food, no meat or wine came into my mouth, nor did I anoint myself at all, till three whole weeks were fulfilled. Now unto the now on the 24th day of the first month, as I was by the side of the great river, that is the Tigris, I lifted my eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, was waist, whose waist was girded with gold of Uphaz. His body was like burial, his face like the appearance of lightning, his eyes like torches of fire, his arms and feet like burnished bronze in color, and the sound of his words like the voice of a multitude. Verse 10. Suddenly a hand touched me, which made me tremble in my knees and on the palms of my hands. And he said to me, O Daniel, man great beloved, understood the words, understand the words that I spake to you, and stand upright, for I have now been sent to you. While he was speaking, th this word to me I understood, I stood trembling. Then he said to me, do not fear, Daniel, for from, this, from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I have come because, your, because of your words. But the prince of the king of Persia withstood me 21 days. And behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to, to help me, for I had been left alone there with the kings of Persia. So, the Bible says this man sought to seek God. He fasted for 21 days. Then this angel appeared and said, God sent me. He heard you the first day, but it took me 21 days to get here. The same amount he fasted. The tenth and final point is fasting helps your help. Daniel was living for God. He was serving in his assignment. He was seeking God. He was inquiring a word from the Lord. He was interceding. He was doing all he knew to do, but there was resistance in the spirit. Sometimes you need help. And sometimes your help needs your help. Gable said, I was on the way from day one, and God led this man to go to his knees day one and he fasted and he prayed for 21 days and there was a war in the heavenlies that he knew nothing about but he obeyed the voice of God and began to fast and while he was praying here on earth something was happening in the heavenlies the Bible says listen your fast and your prayer may be the breakthrough that the heavenlies need to help you for we wrestle not against flesh and blood nor against principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness of this age and spirit of wickedness and heavenly Those things get them moving around. Everything's not visible. That's why when God calls you away and says, get in my face, what you see is what you see. But there's something happening out there where your prayers are energizing your worrying angels. They're hearing strategy for your case because you said yes. So tell somebody, you better fast. And help your help. Then your light will break forth like the dawn, and your healing will quickly appear. Then your righteousness will go before you, and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Then you will call, and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help, and he will say, Here am I.